and the details about it. It's quite a, an uh, uh, expansive program, and uh, as we go into our fourth year, uh, highly successful. We're already seeing changes. With increased uh, quality comes an increased cost, which often acts as a barrier to lower income families. To address this issue, the Regional Partnership Council has invested monies to expand access to high quality child care through scholarships. Quality First Child Care Scholarships will provide access to high quality affordable care and education to 754 children um, that are uh, living uh, lower income that are living in the region. That is uh, at a funded level of $5 million. And I will say that the Central Phoenix Regional Partnership Council has made a strong commitment to helping and serving the families with, with this strategy. The Quality First Program Professional Development Opportunities, the Family, Friends, and Neighbors Program, and the inclusion of children with special needs strategies all work together to provide options for pro child care providers to receive additional training, improve quality, and feel supported in their very important work with coaching and, and uh, stipends and, and improved relationships with both the child that they care for and their families. Through the Family, Friends, and Neighbors strategy, increased funding has been allocated to provide support, training, resources, and referral for unregulated providers in the region as well. Strategies in the goal areas of health and family support will also be available to those caregivers who are caring for the children outside of a regulated setting. Uh, one interesting note is, according to um, a recent study that the Central Phoenix region uh, funded, was the Child Care Demand Study, and it really told us that parents in the region don't really choose one type of care. They really, as a national trend, are really looking at per piecing and pretty much patchworking care. So you may have a family that has children um, in a child care center two days a week, and then uh, a grandparent or an auntie might take care of the child another three days, and then maybe a spouse all patchworking. So and in Central Phoenix, we know that to be very true. So the council was uh, really <coughs> focused on assuring that those providers who we know children are being cared for in their homes are, are also in provided support. Selected strategies, I'm just going to go through quickly and I'm not going to name them all. I, I want you to know that Central Phoenix region has a, a, a budget that it's, it's uh, $15 million each, each year and uh, it represents actually the largest of the 31 regions our, our, our council. And that is due, of course, because of the urban and the concentrated population. The health insurance enrollment will provide assistance to families obtaining health care coverage. In the city of Phoenix, nearly 20% of the children under 18 years old have no health care coverage, compared to 16% countywide. According to the 2010 Needs and Assets Survey, the rate of uninsured children is even higher in the Creighton Elementary District at 27%. As part of the comprehensive system of services to families, the administration of vision and hearing screenings and prenatal outreach will assist parents and other caregivers in identifying children who may be in need of additional intervention and support services. In 2013, it is estimated that 5,000 children will receive hearing and vision screenings. There are a number of barriers that families in the region face in accessing health care and maintaining the continuity of care that young children require. Such barriers are most profound among families in crisis situations, such as those experiencing homelessness, domestic violence, or those with chronic health problems. The Care Coordination Medical Home Strategy has been funded at a million dollars to address this critical need and will be serving more than 700 children and families. 
Family support is a high priority. To provide more support for community families and to focus that support on families with young children, most typically ages three and younger, the council continues with services on the family support continuum by providing home visitation services. This strategy intentionally targets a smaller group <coughs> of families in the region who are more at risk by either age, so social economic level, and educational level. It's important that home visitation programs support each family with their infant or their toddler's early language and literacy <laughs> development in the context of social emotional development. This strategy is funded at $1 million and will serve approximately 300 families. Family support coordination in Central Phoenix will provide estimated 2,800 families with young children access to information, education on a variety of child development and health topics, serving families through an individual case managed approach, approach designed to provide families with information and or referrals to educational resources with support necessary to reduce those stressors impacting the family, as well as enhancing the healthy growth and development of children. This is a new strategy to the council and has uh, just really begun through what we call a phase one, uh, through an RFGA prop process, we've had seven agencies selected to participate in the family support uh, coordination strategy and they'll be coming together February 15 to meet and join and begin the process of planning together uh, the best way in which to serve families uh, and we'll begin the actual implementation of that strategy in July. It's very exciting because um, I'm sure many of you have heard of family support uh, or resource centers and this is just a little different take on that concept. It will result in much of the same uh, support, but we, the council really sees this as even more intense an approach and um, helping families through uh, this case manage. We'll have a family support specialist helping each family on a one-to-one on -one basis. Uh, in fiscal 2012, the council allotted $520,000 uh, to the community-based literacy strategy. Five awards were made under the strategy that included a variety of programming from parent awareness through school readiness kits to parent education through a series of sessions or home visits and the promotion of early literacy by pediatricians uh, practices through a program called Reach Out and Read. Highly successful. I wanted to just mention to you that um, in the Creighton School District boundaries, uh, at this point we have 15 child care centers that are in your region. And those are quality first programs out of a total of 50. So it's a pretty good percentage, I think. And uh, and again, and the, the, we have 50 centers that are going through the, the uh, process of quality first. And now, knowing that with the just approved funding plan by the board, we will now be able to um, uh, work with 90 three or 93 centers and six homes. So we're, we're making some quite a leap, I think, and, and pretty proud of, of making that commitment. Quality First honors excellence in early care and education, helping fam helping develop programs improve and provide important resources for families statewide. So if there's ever uh, any uh, question about or would like to know what programs in your region, I'd be glad to share that with you. The more interaction with positive learning in our youngest children have, the more likely they, are, they will succeed in school and come to your programs and to, into your classrooms. Studies prove that children exposed to high quality early childhood care have better math skills, better social skills, better relationships with classmates, and are 40% less likely to need special education or help back a grade. If we want Arizona's grade schools and high schools to be successful, we must send them to send them children who are ready to learn and succeed. We wanted to just uh, let you know, and I introduced you to Susanna, and um, her role within First Things First is to really be in touch with the community and reach out to uh, organizations and individuals to help everyone really understand what uh, what First Things First does, and particularly in the Central Phoenix region. Um, so I would just encourage, um, you know, maybe Susanna can just say a word or two about that. Thank you, Brett. And good evening, everybody. Thank you for having us. And yes, just as, uh, as she was saying, um, 
this task is not a one person or one organization homework. We have to coordinate all together. All the efforts of First Things First need to be coordinated with all our different partners. And you are one of our greatest partners. Why? Because parents trust you. You are leaders. <coughs> Each and every one of you are leaders in your community. The parents come and feel safe in the school. And that helps us. It helps us deliver our message, telling them that early childhood development is really very important. And it's just a movement that we need to encourage every single person to keep on talking about it until it really sinks and we're able to deliver that message to other people. So part of my role in First Things First is try to connect with parents, with neighbors, with you as educators or leaders and uh, try to uh, do this effort. And we do it in different ways. So we can make presentations. We can come to your schools. You can help us by opening doors to your um, liaisons, parent liaisons, or the appropriate person in the different schools. So what? So that we can come and talk to the parents so that we can bring one of our grantees to talk about a specific topic. Uh, you can also help us communicating us, uh, connecting us with your communications department because we would like to be in your newsletters. I don't know if there is a, a newsletter from the district individually in each school. Well, First Things First has different articles about important uh, things related to education or health and we can participate with that. We can coordinate with you and understand what is the topic or the theme of the month or the quarter, and then uh, try to fit something that is relevant for you there. And as I tell you, we have trainings. We can train part of your staff. Train them to do what? Just to learn how to deliver the message of the importance of early childhood development. That is really very important, and we don't take the opportunity, and they come to us, and we just forget about it. We have different moments that can be um, soccer uh, clubs, we can go to church or Bible studies, we can just go and have coffee with our friends, we can just be waiting in line to pick up our kids, and that's a great opportunity just to mention how important it is to pay attention to our children, to read to them, and to raise awareness about this. So if, if we don't participate all together in this effort, first things first can't do it by itself. We need you. We need you as educators, and we need you parents to be part of this movement. So uh, you can reach us in different ways. Our web page is perfect, and you can just plug in the zip code, and it will take you to Central Phoenix, and you can contact us. Uh, you uh, have our information so you can get in touch with Brooke or with me and we will gladly try to work with you. You can also uh, see us through Facebook, Twitter, there's a couple of videos in YouTube. So there's different, different ways and you can uh, refer us to other groups that you believe that are interested in early childhood development and we can participate all together. Thank you. We just have one little quick, it's one of our advertisements that's kind of a fun little piece. And uh, we'll just finish with that and then we'll take questions.